Hello everyone and welcome to another webinar by Royal Cyber. My name is Amar Nadeem and I'm a Senior Business Development Executive at Royal Cyber and I'll be your host for today. Before we start, if anyone is not able to view my screen or hear me properly, kindly notify me in the chat window located on the right side of the pane. Now for a start, I want to talk about how using Docker as an open source project that automates the deployment of software application inside containers by providing an additional layer of abstraction and automation of OS level virtualization on Linux. Now before we start, I want to talk about um, a little about the agenda for today and uh, moving forward we'll talk about <clears throat> the Sterling OMS. <clears throat> uh, basically for this webinar we're going to have a brief introduction about Royal Cyber and then we'll be moving on to the Docker part of the uh, webinar in which we're going to talk about uh, the customer pain point, uh, what is Docker and uh, some of the Docker's flavors and why do you need Docker in Sterling OMS. Uh, later we'll be moving on to OMS with the uh, Docker implementation and we're going to show you how Sterling OMS and Docker is implemented and what is the solution approach. Uh, the last but not the least we'll have a demo, a live demo version uh, for Docker uh, and since this webinar is live and interactive, at the end we would like for you guys to have a question and answer session in which you guys can answer, uh, ask any questions that would you like. Uh, moving on to um, about us, <clears throat> uh, we have a uh, global client implementation. We have offices uh, worldwide, so we do work regional. Uh, the uh, the reason for our success is our uh, onshore and offshore model, which helps our clients uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, budgeting and in terms of resource allocation. Uh, we've done multiple implementations, and we have a lot of experience with that. Uh, what makes us different is our method uh, our methodology and our good practices, uh, especially our onshore and offshore model with Royal Cyber. Uh, we have been specialized industry verticals and add-ons. Uh, especially with the IBM um, platform. Uh, we're also partners with SAP and um, Microsoft. Uh, we have the highest level of uh, competency in e-commerce. Uh, we have enterprise mobility. We have, uh, like I said, the onshore offshore model and we have um, the support system uh, set up after implementation for 24-7. Uh, you guys will be connected and uh, Royal Cyber will be taking care of all your needs. Uh, moving on to uh, Royal Cyber and why Royal Cyber. Royal Cyber is an IBM Premier business partner and have been working exclusively across the IBM technology stack since 2002, since our inception in 2002. Uh, Royal Cyber takes uh, WebSphere Commerce very seriously and strictly adheres to IBM best practices and policies, thereby successfully providing the best enterprise solution and services to our customers. Uh, we understand IBM technology and integration, including the application, middleware, integrations, APIs, etc. We have a deep experience with IBM since we've been working with them um, since 2002. Uh, they have been trusted us uh, for a long-standing relationship. Um, <clears throat> uh, where the thought leadership and unique uh, product extension and highly experienced IBM practitioners and IBM specific uh, personnel on board. Now as always we have a great speaker with us and today's speaker uh, before we start uh, his name is Mr. Uh, Abhishek Zakaria. Uh, let me give you like a brief uh, introduction on Abhishek. Uh, Mr. Zakaria is a solution architect at Royal Cyber and has 11 years of experience in all phases of uh, um, uh, Sterling OMS uh, such as planning, design, development and delivery. Uh, he has a professional expertise in Sterling Commerce, OMS, order management system, CPQ, uh, which stands for Configure Price and Code. He's involved in a couple of world famous brands uh, for their Sterling implementation. And without any further ado, let me hand it over to Mr. Abhishek Zakaria. Thanks, Omar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, uh, thank you for joining this webcast besides your busy schedule. All right. So I'm Abhishek Zakaria. I'm associated with Royal Cyber for last one year. 
as solution architect for study commerce as amar said i have around 11 years of experience with more than 9 years i am working in sterling order management system sterling warehouse management system and sterling cpq configure price and quote so i have been involved in couple of world famous brand in their sterling implementation so before we get started i have a quick word about this webcast we are live and interactive today we welcome your questions and feedback and urge you to take part as much as possible and we'll do our best to answer your question during this q and a session so let's start the presentation so first we are going to discuss some of the customer pain points so one of the us based sportswear retailer has below pain points in managing their sterling order management system so just for your information they have more than 10 instances in production support and production environment so what they need to do is like they need to do build and deploy its instance separately and one after another from start to end and for each server just to build and deploy so they require 7 to 8 hours so that means 80 70 to 80 hours just to build and deploy their production instance so while doing this build and deployment exceptions and failure are very very common so this is because of this difference in environment so here i am here i am not trying to say it's like the difference is always in the operating system or the software version so this difference could be at the hardware level or infrastructure level so we all agree to this point right so here the pain is the large effort time so it become extremely expensive so and we know that it will definitely lead revenue loss and no company wants this so report says that uh, it's like number one challenge facing by this enterprise it team is the high cost of supporting and maintenance of existing application so it's like the statistics say that this is the most uh, revenue lost uh, revenue loss process so every company wants to minimize this support and maintenance cost right so it doesn't matter in which industry this company belong to it could be banking industry it could be retail it could be hospital sector uh, real estate sector in any any industry uh, this company no company wants to put their money only in this uh, Uh, maintenance and support so basically they want to minimize this cost right then moving at the second customer pain points so scenario 2 it's like ebay when this company first launched ebay now so ebay now is a same day delivery service they started of attempting to use vm so basically they use this virtual machine to help optimize their app development process but soon they discovered that there are limitation of this virtual machine there are limitation of this virtual machine technology so inability to ship frequently changing files in production so it's like they need to frequently bring down the production instance so this bring down time is significantly large and very very frequent so here the pain is the production server downtime and we all agree that no company wants to down their production instance for such a large time so you can't afford such a large downtime in today's competitive business globe right so you have to deploy your app as fast as possible to outpace this competition now this scenario 3 so it was working on my machine why it is not working there so this is very common line or very common statement we heard in almost all software implementation project so it's like there's a frequent fight between the developers testers and the deployment admin basically deployment professional so in some production issues developer used to say that at the time of development phase it was working 
so they say that it is not a development issue they trying to say that it is not a development issue they are trying to justify it is not a development issue because in development phase it was working properly then the development professional it's like uh, but the deployment professional they are trying to push this to the developers bucket so this conflict to lead a huge loss in manpower and which in turn lock lead revenue lost so as a web developer you might be developing on your local server but you should minimize the difference between the local environment testing environment and the staging environment so this will help us to avoid all last minute changes because of this configuration change differences between all this environment so as the code needs to travel from one environment to another it's like from developer machine to production there are many different environment it has to go through right so each of this environment may have minor differences along the way so these are like very few scenarios okay these are very few customer point point pain points so apart from this we have a huge list of customer pain points so now we are going to discuss about the solution of all these pain points so now we are going to discuss about docker and how docker will help in providing the solution to all these ago pain points so now what is docker so as per wiki uh, the, uh, as per wiki the definition of docker is an open source project that automate the deployment of software application inside container by providing an additional layer of abstraction and automation of operating system level virtualization on linux so this is the definition of docker given by wiki so in simpler word docker is like it's a tool that allows the developer system admin that means the deployment professional etc to easily deploy their application in sandbox so this sandbox we call it here as container in docker technology with this sandbox we term as a container and to run on the host operating system that is on linux so the key benefit of docker is that it allow users to package an application with all of its dependencies into a standard unit for software development so basically it is packaging your whole application so this is the definition of docker now sorry so this docker is represented by a logo it's like a friendly well logo okay if you see the image you can see with a 100% surety that the the well is very friendly like the its technology the docker okay so jokes apart so uh, the build ship and run is the uh, tagline of docker technology so docker is an open platform for developing for shipping for shipping here i'm trying to say shift from one host to another host and then running the application basically docker separate your application from infrastructure so as a software developer or software designer you can ignore all the infrastructure issue you can ignore all the like uh, your uh, bare metal issues okay and mainly concentrate on your on your product or software design and development moving ahead so the flavor of docker so right now we have four different docker flavor available so it's like docker for uh, linux docker for windows so this docker for windows is uh, uh, it will be uh, it is it applicable to windows 10 professional version enterprise and education version so soon docker will introduce new offerings which will support more version of windows 10 then the docker for mac so docker for mac is the newest offering for the mac so mac must be uh, it's like 2010 or newer model for using this docker then docker for toolbox so this docker for toolbox is used by this older mac or windows system so basically to run a docker your machine must be 64 bit operating system running and the windows 7 or higher 
So basically, you need that is the requirement of the Docker toolbox. Okay. And additionally, you must make sure that the virtualization is enabled on your machine. So virtualization should be enabled on your system. Then only you can use this Docker. Now this container. So a Docker container is created from a Docker image. So it holds everything that is needed for an application to run. So basically, uh, as we discussed, it's like it's package, whole package. Okay. So Docker container includes the application and all its dependencies. So and it's guaranteeing that it always runs the same way, regardless of the environment where it is running. So basically, it doesn't matter which environment you are using. So it will run always the same way. Okay, so it's a consistency. So although this container is not a new technology, but after Docker arrived, they started to get mainstream attention. So by providing a standard APIs, so they uh, they designed some, they, they developed some APIs. Uh, so by using this APIs, so it is, uh, we can very easily use this container. So it is very easy to use this container by this APIs. So in an article published in the register in mid-2014, in, uh, mid it was claimed that our big boss, Google, so uh, Google runs over, it's like 2 billion container per week. Okay, that means every second, they are releasing like 3,000 containers. So can you believe this? Every second, more than 3,000 containers. So it's a huge. So now uh, Docker allow you to run application. So inside a container. So this is the package. So you have to run uh, your application inside a container. So running an application inside a container takes a single command. So the Docker run. So Docker run is the command to run a, your application in the doc, run a, uh, your container. Okay. So uh, in this example, so I'm giving you here one example, just a hello world. So it will print the hello world. So in this example, Docker run runs a container. So basically this is the command to run a container. Then Ubuntu is the image. You run, for example, Ubuntu operating system image. So when we specify an image, Docker looks first for the image on your Docker host. So let's say you are running this Docker on your machine. Then it will first search inside the Docker, uh, the image is available or not. Okay. If suppose uh, uh, that uh, image doesn't exist locally, then the image is pulled from the public image registry. So that is the Docker Hub. So Docker Hub is the public image registry. So the, if the image is not available on your local machine, on your local host, then it will uh, get it from the public registry. So Docker Hub, so nowadays all the big, big application, uh, uh, the enterprises or business houses, they are like releasing as a Docker, as a Docker package. So you can find uh, web logic package, you can find DB2, you can find Oracle uh, with different version, then you can find WAS. So it's like all big, big, all popular product are releasing or popular product are like uh, releasing their Docker version. Okay. And here bin echo is the command to run inside a new container. Now moving ahead, uh, what is Docker image? So it's like images on Docker are like a snapshot of virtual machine. So we know the snapshot of virtual machine, right? So it's a, it's, it's not technically same, but uh, uh, we can say it's the uh, same as the snapshot of a virtual machine, but way more light, lightweight, and it's like very, very lightweight than the uh, virtual machine snapshot. So it's like Docker container created from this Docker image. So when we can say it is a snapshot in virtual machine technology. So it's like technically, or it's like high level, we can say it's uh, similar. Okay, so you can imagine a Docker container as the live state of 
a web application running from an ISO file. So when we run a ISO file, we can consider this Docker image as an ISO file. Okay. Here in this example, the ISO ISO is equivalent to the Docker image. Okay. So it contains the application and dependencies. So you can run any uh, web you can run a web application from the ISO file, right? So we can say the image is like the ISO file, or image is like the uh, that. Uh, what we can say is an exe file. Okay, not technically, but it's a similar. The purpose is same. Okay, so it's time uh, you have run this Docker image. You told it which image you want. Okay, in the previous slide we used Docker image that already exists. For example, Ubuntu image. Okay, so there are several ways to create this image on Docker. Okay, so we can create the image in several ways. So most of the time. We create a new image based on an already existing image. And since there is a public image to pretty much everything you, you need, so basically uh, we discussed the, the, uh, all the popular product nowadays, they are releasing the Docker version. Okay, they are releasing uh, their product uh, in a, inside the Docker, or they are releasing some container which uh, contain the, um, their product. Uh, it's like uh, already installed and uh, so just you just deploy that uh, image inside your Docker and you just make your that application run uh, up. Then you can use that application. Okay, so it's very rare that you will not find one as per your need, right? So if you, however, feel that the need to build an image from scratch, then you can create an image from scratch. So there are some command, okay. So Docker build, then Docker run. All these are very very useful command. So to create an image, you take an image and modify it to create a child image. So this can be done either through a file that specify a base image and do the modification that needs to be done. Or there is a second way also, okay. So we can do this. Uh, like we can do this live by running an image, modifying it, and then committing it. So let's say I want to uh, uh, change something in uh, my Sterling order management system. So then uh, I just uh, make this uh, image container running. Okay. Then we can change what uh, we can customize that uh, Sterling OMS instance. Then save it. Save all the changes. Uh, and commit it. Okay, then uh, you have uh, uh, then two version of that uh, container, two version of that image. Okay, so now you just want to use the latest one. Then you can run uh, to make the up of the latest image. Okay, and suppose now you want to uh, refer the previous one. Then you can just make your previous image up and running. Then you can use it. So there are like advantages to each 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 method, right? So it's like from scratch you can create by using a file, or you can just modify the existing image. Okay. So here the image have an unique ID and uh, this uh, unique human readable name and the tag pair. So uh, as we said, it's like uh, when we modify the image, it will create some tag. Okay, tag some tag, human readable tag. So image can be called, for example, Ubuntu latest, Ubuntu precise, etc. etc. So if we see here, it's like uh, uh, when we run this Docker images command, it will give you all the images which are available in your local host. Okay. So if we see the, uh, the ima uh, if you see the snapshot here, uh, it's like it will give you the repository there is a column of repository, there is a column of tag, there is a column of image ID, then the created and the size. Okay. And here the tag is the latest version tag. Okay. So if you want to uh, use the previous version, you just, uh, you just up your the previous version of that image and you can access that, access that image. So now it's like Docker command. So uh, here I want to show some of the very uh, frequently used uh, Docker command. So here we go. So Docker build. So uh, build an image from a Docker file. So it's like suppose I want to, we want to 
uh, build an image from scratch, then we have to use this Docker build command. Then Docker images. So it will give you a list of images on your Docker host. Okay. So let's say you run on your local machine, then it will give you all the images which are available uh, on your local machine. Okay. Then Docker run. So it will run uh, that image. Okay. After Docker run, if you pass the version, then it will it will run that specific version. Okay, then Docker PS. So Docker PS is it will uh, it will give you all the instances. So here instance means container. So all the running container, running and stop container. Then Docker stop. So stop a running container. So this command Docker stop command. So after Docker stop, we have to pass the container ID. Okay, then that container will stop. Okay. Then Docker RM, so remove an in instance. So basically, I want to, we want to remove a container from my Docker host. Then uh, this command, this Docker uh, RM command will be helpful. So now this VM, which is container. So before VM, uh, it's like uh, bring up a new hardware resource it it was it was taking days okay so suppose let's say i want uh, i want to put uh, a new hardware or i want to deploy a new application in my production so it was taking days okay so can you imagine it it was taking days okay so virtualization brought this number down to minutes so by it was like virtual this virtual technology so uh, this deployment and all it was down to minutes come down to minutes and docker by creating just a container for this process and not like putting up an operating system break down it to seconds so basically after this introduction of docker so is deployment and uh, shipping from one host to another it is it was it is taking like second Okay, and because of this, Google, Facebook, all are using container-based technology. So all are now a big fan of this container-based Docker technology. So moving ahead, uh, now this war is between the virtual machine and uh, our Docker. So uh, it's a big fight. Okay, so if you see a uh, high-level architecture of VM and container, then you can figure out so uh, the, the guest operating system needed to run in each VM. Okay, so there is a concept of theme virtual machine monitor layer, which will allocate resources in real time. So on the other hand, its container are running on a single machine and all share the same host operating system. So no need to have an extra guest operating system. So basically. If we see the high-level architecture, then you can see that uh, to run a virtual machine, to run a VM inside your uh, inside any instance or any server, you need guest operating system for each VM, right? But Docker, the, the, this this is the overhead of VM, and uh, container based this Docker technology discard this uh, overhead. So now, now so. Uh, just to run this container, uh, we don't require, we are not uh, needed this guest operating system. So on top of your host operating system, a Docker engine will run, and on, on top of your Docker engine, the application will be run. So here the bean leaves are the all dependent file, all dependencies of the application. Okay, so in this Docker technology, we are like removing the guest operating system over here. So in VM, uh, so in past, it's like uh, uh, VM are used for the same purpose of this Docker. So the, but the big advantage of VM is the ability to uh, run a platform by <coughs> its like own config to the top of your infrastructure. But the Docker provides the same capability without the overhead of VM. So as we discussed, this is the like uh, Docker is like uh, yeah, it's like it's putting some additional advantage. Okay, it's like added advantage compared to VM. 
so docker decouple the infrastructure requirement from the application environment so this will make docker light and because of this the container bring down and bring up time is significantly less so we can bring down and bring up this container very very fast so this could be easily portable and can be shared in less time so basically sharing and portability is highest is maximum in container and this container can run on your computer on your in uh, any infrastructure or it could be run on cloud as well so this is the like added advantage of docker so why this docker technology is popular uh, it's like uh, going ahead compared to the virtual uh, virtualization technology or virtual machine technology so it's like here we consider this uh, virtual machine as a brick wall and container as a room divider so as we know it's a brick wall is tough right so it's like uh, size wise heavy then slow to build that is like it will take more time to build okay and messy to move it's like it's not portable easily whereas room divider okay so room divider is fragile and deployed in second okay so it's like ready in less time it's it's within a second it, it is like ready to use okay and move easily and move we can use uh, we can move very fast we can move very easily okay so we can ship easily that's why the docker tagline is build ship and run so this is the top tagline and of docker build ship and run so now uh, we already discussed all this point so benefit of docker why docker so it's a simple and faster configuration than rapid deployment and then no specific skill needed so there are no specific skill needed for this technology to use so prior experience in uh, like developing web application will be helpful but that is not uh, like mandatory okay then docker provides lightweight virtualization with almost zero overhead so it's like already we discussed this thing it's like docker is like uh, discarding the guest operating system concept okay and the bring up and bring down can be accomplished within a second and <clears throat> it will increase the productivity the last but not the least it's increase the productivity the main goal of every business is increase the productivity and we can achieve this by this docker technology so by using this docker it's like uh, it's like uh, <clears throat> all of this above is like uh, we can build uh, all this will be, uh, this benefit will will build your brand okay and it will promote your brand right and your customer will be happier than never before and it, it will increase your business and generate more and more revenue and above all it will give you peace of mind and believe me that's really matter in today's business so now uh, the sterling order management system installation using uh, docker so here we set up an environment of sterling ons using docker technology so the solution approach in uh, sterling ons 9.5 so ibm provide a single click automated deployment process for installing ibm sterling order management system using docker so this is this technology they use they uh, use in version 9.5 so they use a, a gui based deployment toolkit called ibm urban code deploy so formerly this urban code deploy was known as u deploy so this deployment process significantly reduces the complexity <coughs> and time of installation so it's like it will just discard it will just minimize the complexity and the time of installation it will <coughs> significantly decrease so in our demo setup we use this docker technology uh, to <coughs> install this sterling order management system so let's 
<coughs> start this uh, setup. So we just uh, for this webinar we set up a temp, uh, we install a uh, starting order management system using Docker inside a Ubuntu system. So let me access that system. <coughs> Sorry. So let me enter that Ubuntu box. So now I am in the uh, Ubuntu box. So in this box, we install Docker. Okay, so this is the Docker host. So if we see the Docker info, this is the command. So this command will give you all the information of this Docker. So it will give you the container, how many containers are in, in, in this Docker. So there are, it's showing four containers. Okay, running is one. Okay, then images, there are seven images in, in this Docker host, okay? And it will give you all the information, the server version, then your uh, kernel version, then the CPU size and the memory size, all these things, okay? So it will give you all the uh, total memory and all, all the information uh, regarding this Docker host. So the command is Docker info. So let me uh, run a few commands. So Docker. So this Docker images, this will give you all the images. Okay, all the images which is available in this inside this Docker. So as as this Docker information said, it was it, uh, it, it's having seven images. So when we run this Docker images, it will give you all the image details. So it will give you a repository and tag. So we already discussed the tag is the version. It's kind of version control. So we can use this Docker as a as version control. So let's say in development we use this Docker, okay? And then let's say uh, release uh, one release done, one release happened. Then we can just uh, that we can uh, we can tag it. We can do the tagging for that container and just keep it for the uh, future future references, okay? Then docker ps, this command will give you all the running container information. Okay, so here, uh, if you see here, so it's giving one container ID. So if you see here, the container ID is this one. So it's a human readable container ID. So if you run the docker ps minus a, it will give you all the container which are uh, like uh, not it's it, it's 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 like running or stop status. Okay, so all the container available in the in inside this Docker. So let me access the container where I install Sterling Order Management System. So this is the container ID. So let me open a new session. <coughs> Sorry. So this is the container. I am trying to access the container from this particular instance. So, so now I am inside this container. So if we see here, PW is this one. So in this in this in this file directory, I have installed uh, WebLogic and Sterling. Okay, so let me uh, make this application up.
So you can access this uh, Docker container by using some uh, uh, WinSAP or FileZilla also. So this is the URL of this container. Okay, so now your uh, server is up and running. So let me try to access this uh, instance from outside. So if you see here, I have given the port number is 27001. So we map this uh, container port <coughs> with the uh, Docker host port. Okay, so that's why we just add two uh, as a prefix in the port number. So uh, basically, um, in web logic, we need to give 7001, right? So we just add two as a prefix just to map the container port and the uh, uh, Docker host port. Okay, so let me try to log in. So this is the instance which is in Docker. I'm trying to access from outside uh, Docker container. Okay, so basically, uh, 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 this is the demo regarding the Docker. So with this Docker, you can save time effort and money. So if your product is very, very complex to set up, then go through the pain of creating a Docker image once, okay? So once you create an image, then after creating the image, every, everyone can just start a container and use it, okay? So that's the beauty of the Docker. So basically, uh, it's like it will, uh, making the deployment and building process very, very, very simple. Yes, I'm done. Thanks. Uh, back to Amar. Thank you, Mr. Abhishek, uh, for the presentation. <clears throat> um, guys, since we're live and interactive, um, after we talk a little about our global presence, um, I would like for all the attendees, uh, if they have any questions, they can chat it out to us on the window located on the right side of the pane. Uh, we're going to unmute everyone and uh, you guys can have um, the question and answer session. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about our global presence. Uh, we're basically located um, uh, all over the globe. We have 650 employees. We have uh, current 300 IBM practitioners. We have 80 IBM certified technicians and 12 managed services. Uh, our global presence can be found in uh, the UK, Canada, Mexico, USA, South Africa, Australia, Saudi Arabia, and India. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our awards and partnership uh, moving on. Uh, we have won the Smarter Commerce Cell Award in 2013, also been nominated for the Business Partner and the Mobile Innovation Award for 2013. Uh, not only that we are premier business partners with IBM, we also um, hold similar relationship with SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft. And um, uh, let's take a look at our, some of our clients. Uh, since uh, we've been working with um, Royal Cyber and IBM since 2002, since our inception, uh, we have a, a plethora of uh, Goliath of clients, uh, such as Kmart, uh, Follett, Racanu, since HD Supply, Coppel, uh, just to name a few. <clears throat> and um, guys, uh, this is the last section uh, of our webinar before we conclude. Once again, if you guys have any questions, you guys can chat on the window located on the right side of the pane. Or if you guys have any questions, you guys can email us at info at royalcyber.com. Once again, it's info at royalcyber.com. Uh, we're located at USA uh, headquarters and um, it's 55 Schumann Boulevard, suite number 256, uh, Naperville, Illinois. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining once again on this webinar from Royal Cyber, and we'll hear from you soon. Thank you, and take care.